Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Rick Tosic, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to another edition of On the Bench, a Sport Fishing on the Fly. Uh, today, I will be tying a dry fly, and if you guys know me, I don't tie a lot of dry flies, um, purely just because I don't fish a lot of dry flies. I fish a lot of nymphs. I uh, I have a philosophy that, uh, I mean, 90% of the feeding takes place below the surface. So I concentrate on 90% of the feeding time, not 10%. But there are times when dry fly fishing can be an absolute blast and absolutely productive, uh, super productive. So this is the uh, my version of the O'Sable Wolf. Um, and it is a excellent dry fly. So let us get go. In the vice today, we have an Arex FW562. Um, for the thread, I'm going to be using some Semperfly Classic Wax in uh, Pale Olive. Um, for the tail, I'm going to be using a piece of, um, um, this is a locally harvested uh, black pheasant. So it's just a tip of it. I'm just going to use a little bit of that. I like the little bit of the, the green that goes in this. It's not the... Uh, the classic um, tying uh, material. I'm um, actually pretty well none of this is the classic. They're, like I said, my version. Um, for the uh, body, I'm going to be using some Semperfly Kapok dubbing. Stuff floats forever, so it really helps. For the wing, I'm going to be using some just some poly yarn. Um, and for the hackle, I'm just going to be using some, um, this is a, a whiting brown, just straight brown. Again, the the traditional would be grizzly. So, so let us get going. Let me start my thread, as always. I think I'm going to have to adjust my bobbin. I just noticed it's wrapped around one of the arms, but I can do that while it's here. So that's going to come to the back here, make it just a base layer, and then come forward a bit. I'm going to get my locally harvested black pheasant here. As I say, I have a friend that harvested this here in Alberta a couple of years ago. So and I've got like three bags of the feathers. So I'm just going to grab, going to bring them out to 90 degrees like that. And then I'm just going to grab them, trying to keep the tips fairly lined up. And I'm just putting them in a little pile. Now I wanted about the length of the body, give or take, sticking past. So I'm going to come back and just attach that in there. And before I go on, I'll double check. Yeah, it looks about good. Like that, I'm going to come forward a bit. I'm just going to take my excess material here. I'm going to cut it off on a bit of an angle, and then I will tie this back. Make sure it's tied down all the way to the front. Come back over top of this just a little bit. I want it a little bit further back. And then I'll go under the whole pile and pull it forward and over. This will help to keep that tail up a little. Okay, now, and this is key here. Wax your thread when you're using Kapok. Kapok, Kapok. Um, it's a uh, great material, but I just, it's just, uh, it just helps make it hold. So I'm going to be using the BWO, the blue wing olive color. It's green, the, the darker olive. On this one, and I'm just going to uh, dub on a little bit at a time here. And I like doing it with, especially with this K-Pok, I love doing just a little bit at a time, just because it's just easier to control. Okay, so now I'll just. Come forward. I like how that's dubbing on, so I'll just come back and just take some of that off. There's a little bit of a 
a little bit of a hard spot on that piece of dubbing right there. This is a uh, natural product. Um, dub, this uh, kapok comes off of the uh, kapok tree. And uh, I don't know if people know, but this is the uh, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even in the 80s. This was the material that they used inside of those ugly red heavy um, life jackets that we all used as kids. That's if you're my age, at least. So stuff floats forever. It's the nice thing. It just, it helps get a nice, uh, really good dry fly with this stuff, right? Because it floats for so long and just helps being, it's just another one of those uh, materials that will help. So now I'm just going to go back a little bit and build up just a bit of a, of a taper here. I'm just taking just the littlest fluff at a time and putting it on. And when I notice that there's a bit of a bump there, there we go. I want a little bit of that bump in there, right? So it's going to be the tiniest little bit there. Back. And then you can come back through this. Okay. So now I'm going to take my poly yarn. Come just about halfway from the eye to that, that body there. And I'm just going to tie this on like that for now with the hook. Okay, and then I'll just give this a bit of a turn. You notice I only went a couple, two, three turns around there just to help. And then I will come over that. And over it this way, doing my figure eight type of thing, just like you would if you were doing a, uh, putting on a set of dumbbell eyes. For now, I'm just going to cut this roughly to my length. It's going to be long. Actually, you can cut it right there. I want it, I want it fairly long. So that'll be my, my wings, right? Okay. So now I'm going to tie on my hackle. Just exposing my tie-in point here. And I want the shiny side or the colored side facing me, facing out. I'm just tying that in right at the back here. And come forward and wait at the front. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep my hackle out of the way just for a few minutes. I just got a little magnet here. And I'll zoom out so you guys can see. Got these little magnet. And I'm just Pull my materials out of the way. Then I'm going to come back over that and I want to make sure that I'm not scrapping anything. And I'm going to get a little bit more of that, that, um, that dubbing. Now you could, in this case, if you wanted to, do this in two steps. Put a lighter dubbing in the back and a darker dubbing in the front to act almost like a darker thorax. But Gonna try to continue to do that that uh, taper. Got a little bit thicker back here as you go forward, and then I'm gonna come through. Just hold that material out of the way for a second. A little bit more. Actually quite enjoy tying dries. I just don't tie a lot because I don't fish a lot. So okay, so now I'm just gonna take this and come forward three to four wraps at least behind. And come in front, hold that back. Five, six wraps in front. Pull that off, go in front, cut off my excess feather, and then I'm going to hold everything out of the way, my fingers, just create just a small little head here, a 
would finish. Make sure my wings are the way I want them. And there's your finished fly. I'm just going to make sure that tail's in. Here's your finished fly. So I'm going to zoom out. Now, there you go. So that's the finished fly. That uh, hackle will help it float. That uh, catbox will help it float. Even that poly arm, because it's splayed like that, will help it float. And uh, it'll, uh, it'll give that that uh, that mayfly look. Now this is a big one, right? Um, I would tie these in a, uh, a, a 10, 12, and a 14. This is the 10. So this is fairly large. Um, but like I said, these are deadly. And I tie them in, in several different uh, color schemes. Um, I will tie them in the original, which has got uh, um, a, a greenish type body, but with the um, um, grizzly hackle. Not this uh, not this, this uh, brown hackle, but the grizzly hackle. Um, I'll tie these in a... Uh, with a, here we go, the sulfura, the yellow body. Um, and I'll also tie them in the caddis pupa green, right? Just get them a little bit more, just a little bit different colors. But uh, um, the sulfura, the Danica actually too, which is kind of this creamy kind of color, um, I've tied them in that as well. So, and then I will tie them, like I said, in uh, with the brown hackle. I'll tie them with the, with the straight grizzly hackle. Um, and I'll have a few different ones in my, in my, uh, my box so hope you guys enjoyed that one and uh thanks for tuning in to another edition of on the bench with sport fishing on the flank time is everybody